Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about deferred revenue and Acumatica Cloud ERP. Let's take a look at our agenda. So the topics we're going to cover today include how to enable deferred revenue management in enabled and disabled features, how to set up deferral codes, and how you can assign a deferral code to stock items, and then we'll enter an invoice using a deferral code so that it creates a deferral schedule. And we'll look at the deferral schedule summary. And lastly, we'll look at how to recognize the revenue on our schedule. So here we are in Acumatica. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to enable this feature. So I'm going to go to more items and system management and enable disable features. And then under advanced financials, if we scroll down, you want to make sure that deferred revenue management is checked. So back to our agenda, the next thing we're going to look at is setting up deferral codes. In Acumatica now, we're going to go to more items. And because we enabled it, we now have a tile for deferred revenue. We'll go there and we're going to go to deferral codes. So you define your deferral codes, which will in turn define the deferral schedule. Let's take a look at the 12 months evenly one. So as you can see, this is a very simple deferral schedule. We're just going to allocate the revenue equally across 12 periods. Now notice we do have our deferral account assigned here as well. That'll be important when we run a transaction. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the fact that you can assign a deferral code to a stock item. So let's go ahead and take a look at a stock item. So back in Acumatica, if I go into inventory and I go to profiles and stock items, and I'll just call up this particular item, you'll notice that there is a deferral tab. And on the deferral tab, you can then specify the deferral schedule for that particular item. Now we're gonna leave it blank. I just wanted you to know that you can do that. We'll talk about that as we're entering an invoice in a moment. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is actually enter an invoice. So the idea here is that you can invoice a customer for a certain amount, but not recognize the revenue immediately. And in fact, in our example, we're gonna recognize the revenue over 12 months. So as an example of this, from an accounting standpoint, you might sell services and service contracts, and you might issue an invoice for the service contract, your customer, for 12 months worth of services. But since you haven't provided those services yet, you don't want to recognize the revenue for those services. You want to spread that out over the next 12 months. So this is a very common scenario. So let's take a look at how we would do that. So back in Acumatica, I'm going to go to receivables, invoices, and I'm going to create a new accounts receivable invoice. And we'll pick our customer. Now notice my date here is 10-1, and I'm going to go ahead and add a line. And we'll just pick something at random for the item. I don't need to pick stock item. Let's just do that, put in our description, put in our quantity and our unit price. Let's just say it's $100. Well, I'll make it $1,200. Easier to divide by 12, right? So if we scroll through our lines here, eventually you'll get to the point where you can enter in the deferral code. Now, if this was an inventory item or a stock item, that we had assigned a deferral code to, it would have automatically pulled it into our invoice. We not, would not have to enter this manually. So if this was our item that we were selling for our service contract, it would make sense to put the deferral code on that particular item and have it automatically pull in. Whether it pulls in or not, you can edit the deferral code. So I could do a lookup here and just select my deferral code. So I'm gonna do the 12 month evenly. And let's go ahead and save this invoice and release it. 
Well, now that it's been released, let's go ahead and look at the financial details. So we'll look at the batch for the GL. And what you'll see here is that we have $1,200 debiting accounts receivable, but we have $1,200 crediting deferred revenue instead of revenue. So we haven't recognized the revenue yet here. This has gone to a liability account for the deferred revenue instead of the revenue account. Let's go ahead and close this invoice up. So the last couple of things we're going to do here is look at the deferral schedule summary and look at the deferral schedule and then run the recognition. So back in Acumatica, I'm going to go back into deferred revenue and we're going to look at deferred schedules. And let's go ahead and sort this in descending order. And you can see that we have this deferred schedule for 1583 for that reference number of that invoice. Let's go ahead and look at it. So as you can see here, here's my $1,200 that's being posted. And if I look at the schedule for the transactions, it's allocated transactions of $100 per period for the next 12 periods, starting on October 1st. Now you can manually change these if you wish to do so, but I'm not going to, we're just gonna look at that. Another way to look at this is the deferral schedule summary. So we can see that 1583 is still open. We can see that its next date is 10-1, et cetera. So this is going to come up automatically when we go to the run recognition process. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to run recognition and by default, it's going to pull up everything that has a recognition date of 10-1. And let's just go ahead and sort this in descending order so that you can see the one that we just created. You can also filter this for the deferral code if you want. So let's just process the one recognition here, the one that we just did. So I'm just gonna check that, I'm gonna say process. So process the one. And now if we look at the recognition for 10-1, it's no longer on the list because the 10-1, October 1st recognition has already been performed. If I happen to change this to November 1 though, notice that it shows up again because now the second recognition comes into play. But let's go back and look at my deferred schedule for 1583 and let's drill into it. And you can see that one has been processed on 10-1 and we can see the GL posting here. We'll drill into that. And you can see our general ledger posting here is now a debit to our deferred revenue account and our credit to our sales or our revenue account. So we've now recognized $100 or 1 12th of that revenue. So let's recap. We use deferred revenue to recognize revenue over a period of time. I should mention that you can actually start the deferred revenue prior to the invoice. Doesn't have to be the next 12 months. Maybe you don't enter the invoice until three months after something has started and you want to recognize the revenue in the past. You can do that. I should also recognize, even though this topic was about deferred revenue, Acumatica gave, gives you the same functionality for expenses, works the same way. In fact, when we were in the run recognition and those screens, there was an option to choose the type and we chose revenue, but you could choose the type of expense and it works the same way. You could enter an AP bill for an expense amount and not recognize that, that expense except uh, allocating it into the future. But to recap, we went through the enable disable features to make sure that deferred revenue management was enabled. We talked about setting up deferral codes, which controls how the deferred schedule gets created. We mentioned the fact that you can enter a deferred code on a stock item so that it automatically comes onto the invoice when you enter the invoice. We did enter an invoice with an amount and entered a deferral code on that line of that invoice and process that invoice to create the deferred schedule. 
I should also mention if you enter multiple lines on an invoice, you can have different deferred schedules for each of the lines. If you, however, have the same deferred schedule on multiple lines, it consolidates the deferred amount. So it's always by the one invoice. We looked at the deferred schedule and the deferred schedule summary just to show you that it created it and to show what it's going to look like as you allocate it to the future. And then we ran the run recognition process to recognize the revenue on the first of the months. And every time you run the run recognition process, it will always give you a list of all of the revenues whose next date is on or prior to the date that you select in that screen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time and your attention. You can find us on LinkedIn. You can contact us at NIMS and Associates at ERP at NIMSAssociates.com or the phone number on your screen.